Hello everyone and welcome to Calculus and Applied Mathematics tutorials. In this tutorial I will explain how to find minimum or maximum values of functions of two variables. Here is a brief outline and a plan for this tutorial. First, I will briefly explain two theorems that state the conditions and tests for finding points at which functions can achieve maximum or minimum values. I will introduce the concept of a critical point and I will explain the second order test for finding the minimum or maximum value. Also, I will explain the concept of a settled point. Then, I will do an example. Here, I need to mention that this is the first tutorial part. In this first tutorial part, I will present the theory and I will do a single example in order to illustrate the theory. In the second tutorial part, that will be a separate video, I will do a few additional examples. I will do the first example shown over here, that is, I will calculate the points for which this function achieves the maximum value. In fact, here is the 3D plot of this function. At the end of this video, I will explain how to generate this plot in Python. In fact, here is the code. And I will provide a link to this code in the description below this video tutorial. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial as well as more than 300 video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube page. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot. Okay, let us start. First, what are the functions of two variables? Over here, I gave three examples. However, for clarity of this video tutorial, I will give another example. For example, my function can look like this. Cosinus of x squared plus y. x and y are real variables and the function f of x y is also a real function that is for fixed value of x and for fixed value of y we obtain a fixed value for f for example if x is 1 y is 2 we will obtain some value for f of x and y here, in order to make this video tutorial as clear as possible and not to confuse you with too many mathematical details, complexities, and too cumbersome mathematical definitions, I will keep all the definitions at their bare minimum. Here, I will only assume that this function is differentiable. And not only that, I will assume that its first, second, third, fourth, fifth, etc. derivatives are differentiable. Over here, I will introduce a new notation, and please don't be scared. This notation is very simple and intuitive. f with the subscript f is the first partial derivative of our function f with respect to x. To repeat, when you see f with the subscript x, I mean the following. The first partial derivative of the function f with respect to x. Similarly, if you see f with the subscript y, that's the first partial derivative of f with respect to y. Then, if you see f with the subscript xy, that's basically mixed partial derivative. First, we compute the partial derivative with respect to x, and then we compute the partial derivative with respect to y. We can also denote like this, this mixed partial derivative. Similarly, if you see f with the subscript yx, we do the following. We first compute partial derivative of f with respect to y and then we compute the partial derivative of the result with respect to x. Then in the same spirit if you see f xx that's the second partial derivative of f with respect to x and similarly if you see f y y that's the second partial derivative of f with respect to y. Next in the sequel I will briefly explain two important theorems that state the conditions and tests for finding points at which functions can achieve maximum or minimum values. Let's start with the first 
theorem given over here. Let's carefully read this theorem. If the function f of x and y has a local minimum or a local maximum at the point x is equal to a and y is equal to b, then these two conditions should be satisfied. Let us more thoroughly explain these two conditions. Let us assume that our function has a local minimum or a local maximum at the point a, b. Here, a is equal to x and y is equal to b. Then, this implies that the partial derivative of our function f with respect to x evaluated at the point x is equal to a and y is equal to b must be equal to 0. Then, this also implies that the partial derivative of our function f with respect to y and evaluated at the point x is equal to a, y is equal to b, must be equal to 0. Again, if our function has a maximum or a minimum value at the point a, b, then these two partial derivatives evaluated at the point a, b should be equal to zero. The point a, b is called the critical point or the stationary point of our function if the following two conditions are satisfied. And this is very important. As you will see later when we do an example, this theorem will enable us to compute candidate points for minimum or maximum. That is, we will use this theorem to compute the critical points. However, here it should be kept in mind that not all critical points produce minimum or maximum. One example that I will give later on is a saddle point. Consequently, we need a stronger result. We need a second order test. And this theorem gives us this test. Next, let us carefully read and try to understand this important theorem. First, let us suppose that the point AB is the critical point of the function f. Next, let us define the matrix P of partial derivatives as follows. The matrix P is very important for computing the maximum or the minimum values and consequently let us explain this matrix more thoroughly. This matrix can be represented like this. Fxx is the second partial derivative of F with respect to X. On the other hand, Fxy is the mixed partial derivative computed like this. Fyx is again a mixed partial derivative computed like this. And finally Fyy is the second partial derivative of f computed with respect to y. Consequently, from the analytical form of our function f, we can compute this matrix of partial derivatives. And it's very important to keep in mind that this matrix will be a function of x and y. Besides the matrix P, we will also need determinant of the matrix P. And this is how we compute the determinant. We are using the classical formula. We multiply these two terms and then we multiply these two terms and finally we, we obtain this equation. Now, note over here that I can write this equation like this. Why is that? Well, it's a very well known fact that for differentiable functions, fyx is equal to fxy. And if I use this fact, 
I can compute my determinant like this. To apply the test stated by this theorem, we need to compute the value of this determinant at the point x is equal to a and y is equal to b. Let this value be denoted like this. If determinant value is larger than zero and if fxx evaluated at the point ab is larger than zero, then the function f has a local minimum at the critical point ab. On the other hand, if determinant is larger than zero and if fxx is smaller than zero, then the function f has a local maximum at the critical point. On the other hand, if determinant is smaller than zero, then the function f does not have a local minimum at the critical point and the function f does not have a local maximum at the critical point. In that case, the point AB is then called the saddle point of the function f. Here, it's very important to emphasize that if determinant is equal to zero, then we cannot conclude anything about minimum, maximum, or a saddle point. In fact, the function can have a minimum or a maximum value or even a saddle point. However, we cannot conclude anything about the precise nature of this point. Finally, we are ready to do an example. Here is our example. Our function f looks like this. Minus x squared plus 2x minus y squared plus 2y plus 1. The first step is to find a critical point or maybe several critical points. The function can actually have several critical points or maybe an infinite number of critical points. That's also possible. But let's investigate. Step 1. Critical points. To find the critical points, we first need to compute partial derivative of f with respect to x. And let's do that. We have minus 2x plus 2, 0, 0, and 0. And this should be equal to 0. Obviously, from this equation, we obtain that x is equal to 1. Next, we need to compute the partial derivative of f with respect to y. Let's compute it. Minus 2y plus 2 is equal to 0. Consequently, y is equal to 1. And our critical point is 1, 1. To make this video tutorial as clear as possible, over here I repeated the values for partial derivatives and here is my critical point. The next step is to compute the matrix P. Let's do that. Let's go back and let's see again how the matrix P is defined. The matrix P is defined like this. And let's use this definition. P is equal to f x x f y y f x y and f y x where we know that f x y should be equal to f y x and consequently we only need to compute f x y this value is actually f x and this value is actually f y let us first compute fxx. fxx is the partial derivative of fx with respect to x, and consequently we have minus 2. What is fyy? fyy is the partial derivative of fy with respect to y, and the result is minus 2. On the other hand, what is fxy? F xy is the partial derivative of fx with respect to y and it's equal to zero. And by using this equality we know that fyx is also equal to zero. Consequently our matrix P is 
minus 2, 0, 0, and minus 2. Next, we need to compute the determinant of the matrix P. And the determinant should be evaluated at a critical point 1, 1. Obviously, the matrix P doesn't depend on X and Y, and consequently, it will not depend on A and B that are in our case 1 and 1. We just need to compute the simple determinant over here, and the determinant is obviously equal to 4. We conclude that the determinant of P is larger than 0. And we can observe that Fxx is smaller than 0. Now, let's go back to our theorem and let's read again these three tests. First test, if the determinant is larger than 0 and f xx larger than 0. That's not our case. Second case. Determinant larger than 0 and fxx smaller than 0. That's precisely our case. Then it follows that the function f has a local maximum at the critical point. Consequently, we conclude that f has maximum at 1, 1. Perfect! We solved the problem. Our calculations can be confirmed by generating a 3D plot of this function shown over here. And here is the maximum value. And that value is achieved at x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 1. This graph is generated in Python. And in the sequel, I will briefly explain the code for generating this graph. Here is the code. The code is also given in the description below. That is, a link to this code is given in the description below. First, we import the necessary libraries and packages. We use the pyplot function for plotting. Then, we import mplot3d. This is a very nice toolkit that will enable us to plot 3D graphs by using pyplot. Then, we set the plotting style in order to make graphs more attractive. Finally, we import the NumPy library. Over here, we define the figure size. Then, we define these two vectors. These two vectors are used to define mesh grid and mesh grid matrices over here. XM and YM are the mesh grid matrices. Once we determine the mesh grid matrices, we can define our function over here. Zm will be matrix containing the values of the function f in the z direction. Once we compute Zm, Xm, and Ym, we can use this function plot surface. And after that, we can set the color bar, set the axis labels, and we can finally save our graph in this file with the resolution of 600 dots per inch. And finally, we can plot our graph. Let's do that. Here it is. Here is our function. Okay, this is the end of the first part of the tutorial. In the second part of this tutorial, I will do another example. And I hope that you would like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.